morning, everyone. I'm Mayor Allen Joins with the City of Winston-Salem, and thank you for joining us this morning as we are very happy and excited to provide an update on the Mass City effort. You know, we launched this uh, initiative of several weeks ago, and I've just been tremendously impressed and pleased with the response that we've had thus far. I want to personally thank the hundreds, literally hundreds of volunteers and organizations who have worked so hard to get masks out throughout the city. And you'll hear more specifics of that in just a few moments. Uh, you know, we said wearing the mask along with social distancing and washing our hands and other good hygiene will help us move out of the stay at home order. And we saw the governor uh, begin to lift those that will be effective tomorrow, the 8th. However, Going forward, if we're going to continue the lifting out of restrictions, we've got to be even more diligent and, and vigilant in carrying out the, the masking, wearing masking, as well as the other social distancing requirements. Why is that so important? I saw a, a study recently that said that, for instance, if two people come together, one of those who is infected with the virus and is not wearing a mask, and even if the other person is wearing a mask, there's a 50% chance that the other person can be infected. However, if that same person who is infected with the virus is wearing a mask and the other person isn't, the chance of infection drops to 5%. But the greater news is if both people are wearing the mask and one of them is infected, the chance of that infection being passed on drops to less than 2%, actually 1.5%. So you can see very quickly why it's so important that we all wear a mask and it becomes a new norm for our community. Let me now quickly introduce Don Flo, who has been one of the key leaders of this initiative. Don, of course, is a local businessman, made many uh, contributions to this effort. I'm actually unloading trucks uh, all the way down to helping raise money for it. So let me introduce Don Flo. Thank you very much, Alan. And I have the real privilege right now to talk about what we've actually been able to accomplish in less than two weeks in this community. We began this effort hoping to be able to distribute 250,000 masks. Well, I'm pleased to announce today that our number is now 390,816 masks. This extraordinary effort has been made possible because the entire community has come together. This is a story of friendships and institutions and volunteers in an unparalleled manner seeking the common good of our city. And the numbers are really Staggering, we look at the variety of sources and places that are coming. We began the effort with a deep commitment that every single person in this city would have access to a mask regardless of their economic situation. And so I'm pleased to announce that we've distributed 65,568 masks free in this community to low income and at risk seniors. 287,856 masks have been purchased by employers for their employees and their families. And I couldn't have been more proud of our companies in this city who stepped up to put their hand up and said, I wanna buy them for my employees and all their families. I want the people in my company protected. 6,000 masks were sold at Lowe's Foods and Forsyth Seafood in record times. And 20,064 masks will be allocated on senior day for distribution on May 12th. And Mayor Joins will speak more about this later and 11,328 were purchased by senior care, faith-based and nonprofit organizations. Over 85 businesses, universities, medical centers and nonprofit organizations and 176 partner organizations have been involved. You might say this is our D-Day event for Winston-Salem. In two weeks, we gather together folks in a unparalleled manner of planning, organizing, and actually realizing this opportunity. And there are so many people to thank for this effort. I'd like to take a few moments to do this. First, Mayor Allen joins for his leadership and commitment to our city being safe so that we can be open. We've got to be safe first so that we can now then begin to look to how do we be open. And we've learned there are three conditions that are necessary to being safe so that we can begin to be open. Systematic sanitization, social distancing and masking. And Winston-Salem is a national leader in embracing these three conditions for safety along the way. And I'm grateful for his leadership in this effort. Secondly, Chuck Spong and Love Out Loud 
in Timbala Covington in the Minister's Conference. They did a, a level of work that's just unimaginable. They planned and organized the distribution of over 60,000 masks to low-income residents and seniors on fixed income. And they were assisted by an army of volunteers. This community took to heart what it means to love our neighbor. Everywhere throughout the city, we distribute these masks. Mark Owens at Greater Winston-Salem, they just kicked off their new organization and this landed in their lap and they responded extremely well. And we got to see the value of this organization coming together uh, to see how it could bring our business community together. The Ju Julie Freischlag at Wake Forest Baptist and Jeff Lindsay, at, I wanna give my great appreciation for their support for this, their endorsement of this saying, yes, this could make a huge difference, energized our entire community. And for the Winston-Salem Foundation for setting up an account to help us raise money uh, so that we could fund all these masks for free and low income and senior folks. We're still raising money and we hope to be able to fill out, finish that and complete it so that we have no uh, needs left. And I'm very, very grateful for so many people have already participated in this. So to Steve Bumgarner and the team in the capture, when I called them up and asked for help, I'm pretty sure they had no idea what they're getting involved with. Um, they put so much time to this, it's almost unimaginable. They've been great at organizing, planning, thinking about communicating and how we do this along the way. And then uh, to Natalie Broyhill, who was the project manager on this. She's organized and managed this event. Uh, she's got every mask accounted for, dollars accounted for, distribution sites accounted for. My guess, she's talked to more people in the city than anybody's ever talked to in a 10-day process, and it could have never happened without Natalie's involvement. And then to Bill Satterwhite, and his team, and Stan Jewell and their team at Renfro. This is a great example of us being a city of entrepreneurship and innovation, a city that imagines something, and then through friendships and uh, creativity and resolve and commitment actually made it happen. Their initial conversations led to this point in time. And lastly, I'd like to say thank you to the hundreds of volunteers, people from all over the city who put their hand up and said, I'd like to be involved. I'd like to help make this possible so that our city can be safe and that our city can lead the country in showing how we can adjust to this new norm. This wasn't done with any coercion. It was really done out of friendships and kind of a deep commitment to each other, uh, a deep commitment to show that we care about each other's community. And I wanna say personally, I'm deeply grateful to be a member, a citizen of a community like this. Uh, it's a real privilege to be here. It's a privilege to see us coming together as a community and stopping COVID-19 in this community. Thank you for what everyone's done so far to bring this point. I wish I could personally shake the hand of everybody who's been part of this, but we'll have to wait till social distancing ends so we can have a big celebration for how we've done this. And now I'd like to call on Mark Owens, president of Greater Winston-Salem, to talk about their role of business community and what's happened. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you, Don. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with everyone today. But first, let, let me just echo the mayor's uh, comments there. Don, thank you for your leadership and what you're doing for our community and helping to bring us together. As you mentioned with our new organization, our tagline has been the word together and to see it come to life in our community has truly been inspiring. We appreciate your leadership in this as well. It's been an exciting time to see our employers come together to purchase these masks and not only for their employees, but also for the, the families of their employees. You can tell that our business community cares about those that are working with them and side by side as we aim to be safe and get reopened in a safe, timely and effective manner. We're excited to see that happen from big businesses down to small businesses. Uh, most recently, just Pepsi bottling, for example, down to sweet potatoes restaurants so that they can be open today for takeout uh, right down the street on Trade Street. We're excited that these companies have been able to say, we care, we love our, our employees, we love our community, and that is what makes Winston-Salem and our overall community so important and different and unique, is the character that is being displayed in this time of crisis, not created during the time of crisis. I'd, I'd like to encourage our employee, employers in the community we know that there's a lot of smiles behind those masks that are being worn. So post your pictures at Mask the City 
uh, or tag at Mass the City on social media, if you will. We know it's a tough time for those as well. And we know that these masks may be able to help provide some normalcy for folks to be able to go out safely to the grocery stores and different places when they need to have their essential items. We thank the city's leadership to help with this and the communication that our governmental side has with our businesses really sets our community apart from that perspective. A special thank you to Piedmont Triad Regional Council. Our partnership with PTRC has allowed for a workplace restart program that you can find more details at masthecity.com. As of 4 p.m. yesterday, 61 employers had filled out and registered for the program, which requires a, a short training video on safety to help provide free masks to their employees. They're picking up the first wave of masks today, which is over 4,300 masks being distributed to the small businesses in our community through this. So if you're a business, you haven't received a mask yet through many of these channels, and you're looking to participate to keep your employees and your future business clients as they come back to your shops safe, go to MassaCity.com, sign up for the PTRC Workplace Restart Program. We have about 32,000 masks total, so about 28,000 left. There's, there's plenty there for you if you sign up, take care of your employees, and ultimately help restart your business as we get ready to reopen. Again, it takes this entire community to pull this off, and we're so thankful to be a part of that from our board of directors to our staff is just a, a small part of that. And I echo Don's thanks to the rest of the community for pulling together with this. And one of those that has been an instrumental leader in that is Elder Covington from the Minister's Conference. Elder, Elder Covington, it's my pleasure to turn it over to you for an update and we thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Mark Owens. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Joins, for your leadership and the city of Winston-Salem. Thank you, Don Flo, for your support in this great project. So it, it's in an effort to um, really um, bring healing to the city that we've all come together and joined in partnership uh, to develop this program of mass distribution throughout the city of Winston-Salem and beyond. And so as churches and nonprofits, we have been collaborating and we've partnered uh, to assist in distributing uh, the mask and also in partnered in bringing funding towards uh, masking the city of Winston-Salem for the next 40 days. Uh, to safeguard the health of our city, we have coveted it to mask up the city of Winston-Salem, uh, first to the most vulnerable, to the marginalized, uh, first making sure that those um, who have not the means to provide for themselves a mask are able to receive them first. Um, and so we have initially uh, distributed to uh, those populations and continue to do so even today. Uh, we do that through our trusted uh, community partners, some of our partners that you have seen already here today and that you are here from as well. But I'd like to, as part of the Minister's Conference of Winston-Salem and Vicinity, um, be able to highlight a few partners uh, through the Minister's Conference, such as uh, Senator Paul Lowe, who is the senior pastor at Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, Reverend Dr. Dennis uh, Leach, who is a senior pastor at Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. And then, of course, we have some nonprofits that have collaborated and partnered with us as well, such as Odette Sanchez with the Latino Community Services, and you will hear from her as well. Um, we have uh, Dwight Lewis uh, with the 20, and Bill McLean was also a member of the Ministers Conference of Winston-Salem and Vicinity. And they have uh, been distributing, uh, working with Haas to make sure that the part of East Winston Salem is able to receive those masks uh, first. Uh, we are so grateful for all the partnerships. Uh, this has been an honor. This has been a privilege, um, but it is definitely heartwarming to be able to see people come together and work in unison so that we can bring healing to our city and that during this unprecedented time that we're not just bringing unity, but we're showing care and we're showing love to one another, uh, not just through the churches, but also through our nonprofits and our organizations. We're so appreciative of this effort and look forward to continue to do the work together so that everyone in the city of Winston-Salem is able to have their mask. At this time, I would like to um, introduce to you Chuck Spong. He is the executive director of Love Out Loud right here in Winston-Salem. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Covington. Boy, if you haven't got the picture already, uh, I think this whole effort defines, uh, can be defined as citywide, uh, probably like nothing else we've ever done before. An extraordinary uh, number of partners. Uh, so thank you for your partnership, Elder Covington and uh, Don Flo and the mayor and Mark Owens and so many others. 
Uh, I want to paint a picture, uh, a little bit, even a fuller picture of what uh, Elder Covington began to describe in broad terms of what that partnership uh, has looked like. So an extraordinarily diverse network of faith communities, nonprofits, neighborhood associations, and civic groups rallied towards a common objective of distributing the 65,000 donated masks that you've heard uh, referred to previously on the call. Our goal, uh, Reverend Covington and myself with our two organizations has been to uh, that each community member in the focus groups that we were assigned, and th those would be people at or below the poverty line and seniors living independently on fixed incomes, that each one of them would receive a mask from a known and trusted organization. Uh, an individual and groups with relational equity already in, the, in their communities that allows them not just to deliver the masks, but to give, uh, share the importance of wearing it, provide some key instructions about it, and to use that opportunity to check in with those community members during this very difficult season. So since Thursday, April 16th, a team of uh, volunteers and staff have literally built a system from the ground up in a streamlined process, made and answered hundreds of phone calls, texts, and emails, coordinated, mapped, and aligned to so many efforts, and one organization at a time, beginning April 22nd, handed, out, handed off boxes and boxes and boxes of masks from our offices here at the Salt Box to the 176 partner organizations. In quantities that ranged from 10 masks to the Faith Unity Missionary Church, 25 masks uh, for the Legal Aid Society of North Carolina, to 4,000 for the Meals on Wheels program of Senior Services, and 3,000 to seniors and financial assistance recipients of the YMCA. These heroic organizations left our parking lots with masks to begin immediately delivering them directly to people's homes. To date, those 176 organizations have picked up and delivered 62,238 masks, which just so you know, were the first masks literally off the Renfro production line uh, to these communities. Uh, uh, first, before anyone else in the community to show our deep belief and af affirmation of them. And all these masks have really gone deep into the most vulnerable and marginalized communities here in Winston-Salem. While there are lots of big stories uh, that, of large scale efforts like the Y and Senior Services, it's also been the grassroots efforts that have happened under the radar in highly relational ways that have really defined this effort more fully. Of the hundreds of stories and moments from all across the city, uh, Reverend Covington and I wanted to share two that represent some of the breadth and the depth of the work happening. Uh, pastor James Hayes is the pastor of Destiny Temple at the corner of 21st and Cleveland Avenue. We're deeply grateful to the on-the-ground efforts of Pastor James, his wife, Sister LaRonda, and the members of Destiny Temple in just one of the important communities of our city. Pastor James, thanks for sharing with us your heart for this project and a little bit about, more about the work you've done over there in Ladera Crest the Ashley Academy neighborhood and other neighborhoods around your church. Pastor Hayes? Yes, I want to thank you so much, um, Chuck, for your outstanding leadership. Also, to thanks to Mayor Alan Joins, um, Don Flo, Mark Owens, and also Elder Covington. Um, you guys and all of the hundreds, even thousands maybe, of the hard workers at Love Out Loud for the opportunity to partner with you all. Um, with the great churches, the ministries, and the organizations to mass the city initiative. Um, it was a great success. Um, Destiny Temple is just a ministry that highlights that we are in the community, we're part of the community, and we're connected to the community. So this was um, not rocket science for us. It didn't take a prayer because we knew that we had to do the work of the Lord. Our name and our size may be different from others, but we're united in the cause and the ministry of Jesus Christ. So um, I know for personal experience, um, the struggles within the communities that surround us and having roots in mostly all of them. <laughs> um, I know that information, the information gap that a lot of people talk about, um, it's not to put a critique on the information not being there, but I just know that communities um, are hustling just to make ends meet. They're counting the nickels, the dimes, and the quarters just to put food on the table for the families. So we're a ministry that we had to get out there and supply the resources and um, the gear, the mask, to the communities. Um, so this is the reason why we joined forces with um, Mass the City Initiative 
And I want to just personally applaud and celebrate my colleagues in ministry. Um, you too are essential workers to all of the pastors, to all of the ministers, and to everybody. Thank you to all my awesome church that I humbly lead and serve, um, to Destiny Temple members, the partners that collected with us, and countless others that do the hard work in the city and showing the heart of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Hayes, and many thanks to also to uh, First Lady LaRonda and your congregation for your ongoing work uh, right here in the heart of our community. Many of you are uh, likely also familiar with the ongoing uh, work of Elbow and Pastor, uh, now known as uh, Latino Community Services, among the Spanish-speaking families uh, on the northwest side of Winston-Salem. Odette Sanchez joins us, and she is Executive Director of LCS. We're honored to have her share, share some of her role in the Massa City Partnership and the work there in the Old Town area. Odette? Yes, hi, good morning to everyone, and uh, thank you very much for this time. I certainly, um, we're blessed to be able to have this opportunity and to be able to be part of this amazing initiative that it is going straight to protecting all of our families. And, um, you know, when when this began, we started hearing, hearing it in the news, a lot of our families expressed a lot of concern and did not know how exactly to prepare themselves and embrace themselves for what was going to happen. And so immediately we started, um, you know, building on that trust already that we have with our community and letting them know the importance of making sure that everyone took care of themselves and everyone protected themselves, especially those um, that are the most vulnerable, the elderly, the, the delicate of health. And so being in an organization that focus on education for the Hispanic Latino community, we had to, to kind of shift our, our focus and go straight into the areas that our community were most vulnerable right now, which was the need for food and then the need for protection. And so we wanted to make sure that we took care of the, you know, we, we saw the well-being of our, of our families and the children. And so this initiative of uh, being able to mask everyone was very important to us. We, it was very difficult for us and for the families to find masks. And this was an answer prayer for our community. We have been able to distribute a substantial amount of masks and we're getting ready to distribute uh, three more cases this week. We began uh, making sure that we were protecting uh, the, the adults in the home because they were trying, either they're working or they were trying to provide for the families and then the elderly. And we've, we've been able to do that. And now our focus is making sure that every child is covered. We are serving the all town area of Winston-Salem, but we have actually received families as far as west as advanced and as far as no, uh, north as Stokes County also. They all heard that we have masks and we were assisting families with food distribution and with masks and they are reaching out to us and we just, don't turn anyone away. We want to make sure that everyone is protected and that everyone is being served. No questions asked. We don't have any requirement. We just want to make sure that we're reaching out to those that are in need and making sure that we are serving them. So we're very honored. It makes me very proud um, to see the work that's being done. And I'm just totally amazed. I'm, I'm just completely blessed. And, and our community is very grateful for being able to have this blessing uh, be shared with them. So they have expressed that many times and they continue to express it as we speak on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You'll be able to see them in our facilities coming to pick up their groceries and any new families are receiving also masks also as well and receiving groceries as well. So thank you so much for this opportunity to share this update. It is an amazing work that's being done and you're an amazing team. So I'm proud and honored to be part of uh, this initiative and, and to be able to be here with you guys in, in the work that we're doing. Thank you, Odette. Yeah, so just imagine for a minute, those are two of the 176 organizations that have every bit of that same heart and commitment uh, to the, the community members uh, to whom they've delivered masks. Uh, I know a lot of times we as a community wish we, we could be more aligned in our efforts uh, and it's an extraordinary moment to see that happening here in the, the sector that Reverend Compton and I find ourselves in with largely nonprofits, faith communities, and 
uh, neighborhood associations, but of course, as you see it reflected on the call of the business community, the health community, and others. So we're grateful to Destiny Temple and Latino Community Services, all these other community partners, and the hundreds of volunteers for the efforts. Uh, Mayor Joins will now share another phase of this effort to mass the entire city. Mayor Joins. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, wow, I, I am so impressed. I think you should be as well of all the work that has been going on in our community. I think Don described it exactly right by his description of being a D-Day for our city. We have clearly stormed the beaches here in Winston-Salem and established the beachhead, but now we've got to move forward and make sure we're using those masks on a regular basis. Over uh, the past several days, as you've heard, we've uh, distributed literally thousands of masks to our senior adults in our community. Uh, uh, and yet there's probably a little bit more work we need to do in that regard. Uh, there may be seniors who are not working for large companies or maybe who are, uh, their income doesn't uh, allow them to receive the masks through uh, assisted living facility or something of that nature. So as a result, we are uh, announcing today a Mask the City Senior Day, which will be next Tuesday. May the 12th, beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. Teams of volunteers will distribute about 20,000 Renfro Nightingale masks to these seniors at no charge for seniors who are 65 years old or older. Now here's the good part. We're gonna do this at nine major sites all around the city and we'll show those to you in just a moment. Uh, each of these sites will be a drive-through facility where you drive up, show your ID, uh, showing that you are 65 years old or older. We're gonna limit it to two masks per car and one mask per ID uh, presented there. There'll be volunteers from the host sites there, including sports venues, educational institutions, charge, uh, churches, and so on. Volunteers from these host sites will be there to help pass out the mask uh, and uh, make sure things move uh, smoothly. As I mentioned, these masks are free, However, many of the seniors have uh, asked about their ability just to buy masks. So there will be volunteers from the truest uh, financial institution there that will take cash donations or individuals who would like to just go online to uh, masthecity.com and make a contribution there. Money's raised uh, through these donations will allow us to help pay for the, in part for these 20,000 masks will be given away on Tuesday, as well as perhaps to buy additional masks in the future. So we'll uh, ask that uh, uh, those who want a mask, senior citizens, to be at least 65 years old or older, and we'll limit it to one mask per ID presented. So here are the nine sites around the city. The BBNT Ballpark, the Bowman Gray Stadium, the East Parking Lot there, St. Peter's World Outreach Church, Carver High School, Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum, the Fulton Family YMCA, Mount Tabor High School, Calvary Baptist Church, and Forsyth Tech West Campus there on Bolton Street. Great opportunities all across our city and each one of our wards, great opportunities for you. As Don said, safe and open is our goal. And we want wearing a mask to be the new norm for our city. We're doing this together. Together as a community, we can lick this situation that we're facing. So now we'll be happy to open it up for questions. Members of the media, if you would uh, identify yourself and uh, maybe if you want to direct a question to a specific speaker, we'll try to handle it from there. Any questions? Hey, it's Wes Young as a journal. Um, yeah. Every time one of these announcements are made and we put something in the paper, I always get phone calls the next day from people who, some, for some reason or another, don't know how to hook up and find a mask. Is there a number that people can call or some way, like, we, we always have people, you know, making these, mm -hmm. and they're even willing to, to, to buy the mask at, or at retail or whatever. Right. Now, these all these locations will be uh, on the city's website, clearly. Uh, I don't know if there's another uh, source, anybody on the call that could uh, comment on that. So I think that Mark, this is Don Flo. I think that uh, Mark Owens can speak to what's available through the business community and some more links. Um, additionally, uh, within churches, uh, they're out buying those that are being distributed to them. 
So there's an opportunity for everybody to look at any institutional uh, relationship they have, because I think with 390,000 masks, um, that covers a great deal of our population of our city. Plus, we've had tremendous outpour from a volunteer group in the city that's now gone and built and created more than 30,000 masks. So um, we continue to be open to this, and we want to ask why we're going to look ahead and say, can we continue to raise funds to find other mechanisms if anybody is left without a mask along the way? Mark, you want to speak to that anymore? Yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, MaskTheCity.com, Wes, to your point, is a, a great location for that. As Mayor Joins mentioned, uh, the sites will be posted on the city website as well. Uh, the great folks at the City of Winston-Salem City Link numbers have information as well. I know, uh, please be patient. The number of calls volume is high, uh, but we can hopefully have the information there for those that if there is a, a connectivity issue and a phone number is the best. Uh, City Link staff does an amazing job there. Could be a great option for those folks to call and ask questions as well. Uh, we, you know, for the folks that do have questions that come in, if you will talk to your employer or talk to a nonprofit that you're involved with, uh, as you've heard, there are so many people that are a part of this effort. And if there aren't a connection there and you don't have one of those areas, as you mentioned, Mass the City, you can, you can uh, send us uh, some information there as well on the website or call in. We'll find a way to design. It's all designed for that everybody to have a mask. So we have an option for everybody. We just got to get you to the right place. So hopefully that can help answer that question. Mark, masthecity.com is a great universal site to go to there. Uh, any other questions? Yes, um, I have a question. This is a Dure from WFMY. Um, some numbers were thrown out in, uh, at the beginning of this conversation. So if someone would just kind of go over that again. I know you said you had about three, 390,000 plus masks that were distributed initially. From this point on, how many more masks are you distributing or are going to be available um, you know, post this update? I think Don's got that. Don, I believe you're muted, sir. If you would oh, check the mute. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, presently, go. thank you. We have 390,816 masks that will be distributed in the in the community. That includes the 20,000 that will go out on Senior Day. So that's why we are presently also trying to see: Are there more masks that we need to look at and cons give consideration to? So the total number that we have commitments to are 390,816. Uh, and would you like that broken down further again by the, the groups? Uh, we may no. have that. Uh, I can get into exact numbers if you like them again, or we may okay. have a screenshot. Hold on. So you said so far, how many have you distributed? I thought that that number that you put out there was the number of masks that you have already distributed. Help me understand that. Yeah. So it's 390,816 that have been committed So to us. Uh, the ones that are left to be distributed, which will happen on May 12th, the 20,064 will be allocated on senior day. Uh, there are some companies still out, uh, distributing those to their employees at this moment. They've gotten in there distributing them out. Uh, and there are a couple churches that still have some orders that are coming in to be distributed. So our anticipation is by next Tuesday, all 390,816 will be distributed in the community. And that this uh, big celebration, this big allocation on, on May 12th, will complete the 390,816 for the city. Everyone's been committed okay, to it this time. I got it? Yes, that clarifies it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Hearing no other questions. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, it's Wes. Um, yeah, go ahead, Wes. Not directly related to masks, but uh, the governor announced that state parks could reopen. Are city parks going to be open also on Friday? Yeah, we've really never closed our parks. So we we closed the playgrounds there, so the the parks will continue to be open. Um, uh, we're not sure about the playgrounds at this point. All right. Well, let me just once again remind you, uh, May twelfth. 
uh, is the senior day at 11 o'clock at the nine sites that I listed. Those will be there uh, uh, for folks on our website, city website, as well as the Mass the City website as well. Thank you for joining us this morning, and remember, wear your mask.